Ladies and gentlemen, it's the next podcast from myself, Killer Keller. Thank you, you kindly for joining us again for the world of the upcoming, the new, and the currently out there moving and shaking that you need to know about. And today we have a very, very special guest, South African, most definitely representing the UK, in addition to a sultry voice and one hell of a powerful lady at the forefront um, of everything she does. Okay, Faye, how are you? I'm all good, <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. How uh, How's things? What's going on? A lot, man. Yeah. A lot, a lot, I'm not going to lie. Just like, just released a single mm-hmm. um, after my debut album titled Travelling Heart. Um, the single is called Summer Kissed. Ah, it nice. was released actually on Friday. Wow. Um uh, so Spotify and Apple say it's the third, but it's actually the fourth. Got you. Yeah. Got you. Summer kissed in reference to summer or in on reflection of summer? Um, so for me personally it was a um it was a gift for my fellow South Africans. Uh. Um because it's opposite seasons mm-hmm. in South Africa and the UK. See, so, um, see, you know, top of all our eyes. We know when, it, when, when it's cold here, yeah, it starts blazing in the southern hemisphere. Mm. So I wanted people to to jam, you know, mm. to like that '90s feel good, that '90s flavor mm. inspired, paying homage to. Mm-hmm. Because some of the best music was made in the '90s. Mm-hmm. So that was a way of me paying homage and. To give back a vibe. Mm. Um, it's also just a mind state, you know? Mm. Yeah. It's like summer kiss, like it's a mind state. So even if you're not in summer, you can still have a summer summer mentality. Yeah. So it's like a sun, summer state of mind. Mm. You know, we, we know a few people that like have yeah, yeah. sang about like a... Summer time and stuff like that. Summer. Oh, so California... California... Love yeah, by that's Tupac. Right. That's another one. You know, yeah. um, he sings about a the love sunshine, sunshine state of mind. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's summertime somewhere in the in world. In the world. It's a big place, yeah. right? The yeah. world is massive. Yeah. Yeah. If you can capture a song that reflects a moment that of, of joy that within anyone's life, whether it's, you know, the five o'clock happy hour or it's summertime or it's Christmas, there's... There's something about that everlasting uh, gift that you're you're putting into the hands of people that you know with the right ears, or they really appreciate the essence of these sorts of songs, isn't it? Mm. It's very few. And far Music lives them. forever, right? It does, uh, but you've got to hit right. You've got to strike. You've got to you've got to be intentional about this stuff, you mm. know. Um, like Fela said, like music is spiritual mm. don't don't mess my, my my language is so bad don't fuck with it <laughs> don't fuck with music it's a spiritual thing mm. so you need to be so intentional with it oh now we're getting somewhere so some people are, are born through the adversities of their life or you know wh- wherever that guidance comes from but they really make an impact in to the point of cultural shift it's almost like they would they were destined to do it that they the conduits for these very specific roles of changing the the points of view and mindsets of people elevating humanity do you know what i mean yeah i think you also said that um you spoke about the truth in music mm. and speaking your truth, talk your shit, mm. you know? Not everybody's gonna like it. Mm. Not everybody is gonna mess with it because it highlights, some, some of my music highlights the ills in society. Mm. And people, you know, rightly so, we wanna be in summer mode all the time, which mm. is like everything has a time and a place, especially in your career. Mm. Um, summer Kissed was a bit more commercial than my other stuff very intentional Mm -hmm. but if you look at some of the lyrics um they're also very intentional Mm. like it's summertime summertime but when i say malibu and lime that's that's intentional (laughs) like not malibu the alcohol brand Mm -hmm. malibu as in 
reference to the city that I'm from, which is Cape Town, South Africa. Wow. So that California living, we are literally the most laid back people ever, but don't fuck with us. You know? <laughs> like we are, we, we're seaside people. Mm. We, we live by the sea. So that's, that's my, my, uh, my city of birth. Mm -hmm. But Joburg is much as, is, is as big as my home as Cape Town is. Um, I've, I've, I've spent a lot of time. My dad actually lives in Johannesburg. Oh, so, right. um, and so do my, my brothers. Majority of my family actually moved to Joburg. Um, so I had to like relearn Cape Town basically because mm -hmm. I, I, I left at a very young age. Right. Uh, about 15. For those of you that, uh, of us that, you know, haven't been to Johannesburg, let alone Cape Town, give us the differentiation between the two from, I mean, it might be Brighton versus London for all we know. What's the, what's the, compar what's the comparables in towns around here and what's the difference between these two places? So Johannesburg is, I would say, an authentic African city. Mm -hmm. um, very authentic. Um, you get a feel for what an African city is like. Um, multicultural. Um, like a lot of uh, the melting pot of Africa you'll find will be in Johannesburg. Cape Town is, is lovely. Um, I rep my city well because mm -hmm. it's my birth city. Um, yeah, C Cape Town is complex. I'm mm -hmm. not going to lie. Um, uh, the city is an assimilation. It's created that way. Mm. So um, the CBD, you'll find, you know, security everywhere because tourists go there, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. you know? So everything has to be safe and look great. So mm -hmm. it's like perception versus reality. But as soon as you go in the outskirts, Grassy Park, Google it to um, Kailicha, they don't care about people. Really? They don't. They don't care about people. Um, Service delivery is not what it is. Right. Um, but if you go to the, like, Clifton, um, Camps Bay, mm -hmm. um, that side of the world, you get the most expensive properties in Africa. <laughs> and they're all bought by, by Europeans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Germans, the English, they buy up the property. They live the best life, you know. Um, it's only now that you're getting a, a, a bit of new money, um, which I hope we, we as, as the millennials, mm. we can really work on like investing in our own properties yeah. in the near future um, to buy our property. Wow. Because, you know, old money is running the shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's the hardest part about yeah. these, they, they really do, they suck the, the city of its, of its um, youth. And yeah, and it, it, it creates a lot of ills, you know. Um, it cre creates a lot of ills. The, the segregation of the city is not a healthy thing. It creates ills like, you know, gun crime, um, knife crime, xenophobia. <laughs> um, and the thing is, like, for me, I'm like, as Africans, like, xenophobia is not an African concept. <laughs> it's a European <laughs> concept. <laughs> it was birthed in Europe. <laughs> and that's how much the system has got us at our knees. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a very sad thing but i mean we're doing the work and i i hope that we can continue doing the work and you know um we can be proud africans mm. um because essentially we're african you know all of us southern africa the southern african region west africa mm. east africa north africa we're one you know yeah you know um, where my, you know where my mind wandered there for a second um I'm going to throw some names out, actually. Um, I'm going to say Janis Joplin, Nina Simone. I'm going to say MIA, because they're Bjork, Nana Cherry. I'm going to say Grace Jones. That's just off the head. These are empowered women of music that always have not, not just a message, but this authoritative, powerful purpose how they talk and what they talk about and as you were talking there my mind wandered to you because we had a chat the, the energy that you have 
mm-hmm. that actually makes your music the soundtrack to you in the very same way that it does for those artists I mentioned. It's like you're almost like a, your 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 skill sets are kind of passe to what your true beliefs and what you stand for is. And that's actually crazy because you're so skilled in a, as a vocalist. But you don't, you're like, I've got a bigger... I've got bigger things to talk about here. I've got bigger purpose to be pushing. And that's that's attractive, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. It's true, though, because it's not, there's not many artists like that. There really isn't. And yeah. I know you're a fan of Nina Simone as well. I am. It just, it's sort of, it's, it's tough because it, it requires the long road, mm. you know. Um, media is not going to cover you. Mm. I'm not willing to pay payola. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to pay to be on your playlist or your website. Um, I'm not going to call people out, Mm -hmm. but maybe we should at Mm -hmm. some point. We should (laughs) fucking call people out, Mm -hmm. you know. Why the fuck should I pay $2,000? For what? Mm -hmm. For IG posts? Are you fucking Mm just? Just from Cape Town means like, are you fucked in the head? Are you just? Are you just, you know? (laughs) That's sick. You've heard it first, new slang. Got it. Yeah, come on, you can. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, The power of that cut off decision of nah this is the way i feel think and this is how it's going to be it's it creates a loyalty within your music the framework of your art as fans right yeah i just i try to be my authentic self at all times i'm not perfect i'm flawed i'm very open about my flaws i'm not the perfect person but I do fucking try mm. at this thing. And this music thing has a way of making you feel like shit. Mm. Like, it'll make you feel like, like you just you just look at society and you're like, is this what we're consuming? Mm. You are what you eat. You are what you listen to. You're everything you consume. Mm-hmm. Why are we putting this shit out? Mm. We're making our people sick. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we're making society sick, you know, and sicker and sicker. Yeah. yeah. Pushing the envelope on creativity. What was your influences growing up? Musically or? Mm. Um, I, uh, jazz was my foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, it was Nina Simone. It was um, Ella Fitzgerald. Um, those were the things that played at in, in, in the house that I grew up in. Um, Aretha Franklin, mm-hmm. who Aretha Franklin is my heroine, oh. you know. Um, Oi. She's uh, inspired a lot of my career. Mm-hmm. Um, Louis Armstrong, um, Miles Davis. Um, very strict jazz household. Um, almost so much so that other music wasn't allowed. But my granddad actually uh, slipped some CDs in for me. <laughs> he did a little did cheeky yeah, yeah. granddad thing. And uh, gave me Celine Dion, Tony Ooh. Braxton CDs. Nice. CDs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, when we still used to do CDs. Mm. Um, Tony Braxton, Celine Dion, Mariah Carey. I got my first Britney mm. album too. Nice. The blue one, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm aware of it. <laughs> um, uh, Tony Braxton, man, like, it was why people. I always felt like she was a slept on artist. I'm telling you, like, I'm right, you know, especially the newer stuff as well, where she was doing stuff with Neptunes and and all that kind of thing. I was like, yeah, like she. She yeah. was like her voice, that that mm. like that lower tone. Ridiculous. Ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. H- and, and still a level of husk to it as well. Yeah, I yeah. think the the thing with Britney Spears is I only wanted it because all the other kids in school had it. Yeah. I wasn't like, but also like, I got bullied in school. Mm. So I just felt like, you know what? What, because of the Britney CD? Just generally <laughs> for looking different. <laughs> for for being different. I, I got bullied in South Africa and in the UK when I came. So that's why there's this dynamic mm. of like belonging mm. and, um, you know, it's complex. Yeah. It's complex being of two places mm. and feeling like you're you're two worlds. you're you're you're, mm. you're in two worlds. And I, that's why I call my, myself a nomadic South African Londoner. Mm-hmm. That's why I I decided that you know what, guys, like um, when I'm fed up or when I feel like I need to fly off, I'll I'll go wherever I feel. Wow. And that's it. The the mark of a true artist, in my opinion. Thank you. Isn't it? Yeah. Surely. Like, I just don't like the politics. 
Um, I talk about the politics because my existence is politics. Mm. Like my, I don't mess with politics because politics is um, it's a job. Mm. Presidents get paid mm. a salary. <laughs> That's um, true. Government people mm. get paid a salary to do yeah. what they do. So I don't mess with politics like that. But my existence is political. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my mere existence, I was born mm. out of politics. Yeah. Um, but politics of like revolutionary shit, mm. you know, like 1990, mm -hmm. the end of apartheid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, wow. You mm. know, and so much so that um, my father actually registered my birth in 1994. Um, even though I was born in 1990, um, so that I would be racially unclassified. Wow. So, yeah, he probably knew what I was going to deal with mm -hmm. growing up. I identify as a black woman, but I'm um, like, I, my dad waited to 1994 to register my birth so I could be racially unclassified. Mm. See, on, on, on this podcast, it's, it's all about people's voices to be broadcasted louder their stories to be exposed wider and telling the real stories behind the music and what what is awesome is that you know through chance um looking through new music and finding you it was just like man this is crazy and there's so many stories out there that don't get told, no. uh, go under the radar. There's so much talent and, um, you know, it gets, it gets looked, it get, it, there's always an agenda mm. when it comes to um, things with a message because we're all programmed to have a certain mindset. Mm. Um, I don't watch TV, for example. Mm -mm. Um, I don't, it's mm -hmm. not something I do. I yeah. don't enjoy doing it. No. Um, but I, you know, there is an agenda. Mm. I'm not going to get all, um, mm. you know, what's it? Mm -hmm. um, it's conspiracy. It's conspiracy yeah. theories. Um, but we all know what's happening in yeah, the world. Yeah. Like, yeah. we're all very aware mm. of what is currently happening in the world. For sure. For sure. We all know. Mm. We all know the people behind it. We know... Um, we know the people behind it. Mm. Even in the South African context of the South African industry... Everyone knows who is behind Spotify, Apple, people's careers that mm. are blowing up. We know what's happening. Mm -hmm. We just can't talk about it mm -hmm. because they'll off you. Yeah, yeah. That's it. My algorithms are currently going <laughs> on this episode at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, hold on. <laughs> we all know what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. We're like, and we can't say anything. No. We can't. And that's the saddest thing. Mm. We have to live in a space of one, looking after self-safety first. Mm -hmm. As artists, some of the dopest artists out there know, and you know, they've worked consistently for years mm -hmm. that have not had the platform of these kids, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, that are blowing up mm -hmm. in the world, world stage. There are people that have been hustling mm -hmm. for a very, very long mm -hmm. time. But because there's an agenda yeah. and we know the people behind it, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. But we push forward. We push forward. We fight. We have Because it's the, we, we born out of struggle. Yeah. You know, that's, we are born out of struggle. Yeah. We are born from, from a place of like, we pioneer forward. Mm. And then that's what it is, you know. What's the future? What's the future for Michaela? The future is the present. Mm -hmm. F thinking about the future is anxiety. Um, I do have a plan. Um, I do have a plan. I will always have a plan. But I'm in the present. Mm -hmm. um, I've got some. I've got such a great support system of creatives, which I need to. I need to say thank you. Mm -hmm. Big them up. I need to big them up. Yeah, pick um, them up. Go yeah. for it. Yeah, man. Let's go. Let's go. Send it up. Here's my shout outs. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say thank you to my peoples um, in the following order. Uh, Black Print Films, Jermaine, thank you. Lifa de Tejo, Sitle Dlamini, Luggage Lullaby, Aishani Goplin, It's Me, the Intern, 
He said he knows you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Hope tight. Come yeah, on. Yeah. Seven Apes, Free C, The Pinch Online, Yavis, you, uh, Uet, Owetu, Jesse, Sakumzi, Quenza, Lelo, Twalati. Mm-hmm. That's actually my brother. Right. Yeah. Um, Elizabeth, Zara, and Bethan. If I've missed and left anyone out, it's, it's always love. It's love always. One hell of a sign off. Michaela, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Thank you. Lovely Arts Arcade. Killer Keller. Thanks so much. Next podcast. Thank you. Thank you.